This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 493. In the Gym, Keep It Simple, Stupid, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. A very happy Wednesday to you. Welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I read to you from popular health and fitness blogs to help you optimize your health. Whenever I read posts from Steve, you know, given that his website is Nerd Fitness, I always think about my nerdiness a little bit. I've talked about my love of superheroes, for example, on this show before. I'm a huge superhero nerd, and I realized I'm letting myself down. It's June 6th, and I still have not seen the newest Avengers movie or Deadpool 2. I don't know if I can get extra points because I'm wearing my Batman t-shirt today when recording this episode, but I think I've really let myself down on this one. All right, first priority this weekend, I gotta go see at least one of those movies. But as usual, I digress. So let's get to today's post and start optimizing your life. In the Gym, Keep It Simple, Stupid by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Open up any copy of Muscle and Fitness and you're bound to find dozens of different workouts that will sculpt the three parts of your triceps, individual abs, all parts of your shoulder, etc., with ultra-specific exercises that isolate individual muscles. These routines will ask you to spend five or six days a week in the gym for two hours at a time. Unless you're a bodybuilder taking steroids or you don't have a life, exercising like this is ridiculous. If you have a job, friends, family, and maybe a hobby or two, two hours a day in the gym six days a week just isn't an option. I spent a few months in college following one of these routines because I didn't know any better and I had the free time. I spend close to two hours a day in the gym, doing six or seven exercises of at least three sets each for the muscle group of the day, and then come home and drink my protein shake, like they said in the magazine, and I did this religiously for three months. You know what I got out of it? Not much. Exercising like this is time-consuming and not practical. The phrase, appearance is a consequence of fitness, is something I truly believe in, and it makes a lot of sense. Don't worry about exercising to look good. Exercise to get strong and healthy and you'll end up looking good as a side effect, which isn't too shabby. Rather than doing time-consuming isolation exercises, concentrate on exercises that recruit as many muscles as possible. If you can do one exercise that uses three muscle groups in only 10 minutes, why bother doing six different exercises working each individually? Sure, each muscle might get worked a little harder that way, but it's going to take you at least three times as long. Unless you're bent on becoming a bodybuilder, the benefits don't outweigh the cost. Let's take a look at the four or five key exercises you need to have in your gym routine. You can get all of these exercises done in one 45-minute session and you'll have worked practically every single muscle in your body. Number one, squats and deadlifts. If you quote-unquote work out and these exercises aren't in your repertoire, you're wasting your time. Not surprisingly, you won't see many people doing these exercises in your typical gym because they think they'll get hurt doing them. This is untrue. If you do squats and deadlifts correctly, you will have ridiculously strong and stable legs, back, and core, which is crucial for injury prevention. Injuries occur because these muscles aren't strong enough in certain situations, like moving a couch or carrying your kids around or swinging a golf club. I guarantee you'll earn the respect of everybody in your gym when you start doing deadlifts with three plates on each side. Only have 10 pounds on each side to start? That's fine. Get stronger every day and you'll get there eventually. Two, pull-ups and chin-ups. Rather than doing bicep curl after bicep curl, which is both lame and vain, do pull-ups and chin-ups. Ever seen a fat rock climber? Nope, because you need incredible strength to pull your body weight up the side of a mountain. I feel like this is one exercise that is a true test of your strength, which is why it's one of my favorites. If you're not strong enough to do pull-ups and chin-ups yet, see if your gym has an assisted pull-up machine. These are better for you than using the pull-down machine. Three. Presses, think chest and shoulder. I'm a big fan of incline dumbbell chest presses because they work your chest, shoulders, triceps, and every muscle in between. To do this, set a bench at a little less than a 45 degree angle, grab a pair of dumbbells, and press them up above you as if you were bench pressing. Other options would be to do a regular bench press on a flat bench or a standing shoulder press. If you're just starting out in the gym, I would strongly recommend either a full body routine or a two-day split, making sure you go all out for 45 minutes and no more. Focus on just these exercises and get really strong at each of them. Start with a low weight and concentrate on having 
perfect form. I have a lot of respect for a guy that can squat down past parallel even if the weight of the bar is minimal. You might ask, what about my biceps, triceps, abs, etc.? Well, when you do pull-ups and chin-ups, your biceps get a hell of a workout. When you do bench presses, your triceps get worked like crazy. When you do a deadlift, you also work abs, lower back, traps, and forearms along with your legs. Only after you've advanced to a high level of strength, think squat one and a half times your body weight, or deadlift twice your body weight, etc., then I would recommend doing isolation exercises. If you're not there yet, don't worry about it. Try to add weight each week to these exercises while maintaining good form. So here's a simple full body routine implementing these exercises. Squats, four sets, reps of 12, 10, eight, then six, increasing weight each set, and wait one minute between sets. Incline dumbbell press, four sets, reps of 12, 10, eight, and six, increasing weight on each set and wait one minute between sets. Deadlifts, four sets. Reps of 12, 10, eight, and six. Increase weight each set, and wait one minute between sets. Pull-ups or chin-ups, three sets to exhaustion. Do as many as you can in each set. If you do pull-ups this time, do chin-ups the next time. And lastly, don't forget to stretch afterwards. Your muscles get rebuilt on your off days, so I wouldn't do this routine two days straight. Do it on Monday, run sprints on Tuesday, go for a walk on Wednesday, and then do this routine again on Thursday, then sprints on Friday, and then take Saturday and Sunday off. That's an hour and a half total in the gym, 40 minutes of sprint, and an hour of walking. Only three hours and 10 minutes out of your week. Sounds too simple and too easy to build muscle, right? Not true. If you do this and eat balanced meals, you will build mass. Give it a shot and simplify your routine. You just listened to the post titled, In the Gym, Keep It Simple, Stupid, by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. When I first started out getting into weight training, actually, that's not true. Even for years after getting started in weight training, I would do isolation exercises. My buddy and I would go to the gym and say, we're doing chest day. So of course, we'd go to the gym and do nothing but chest exercises. Now, don't get me wrong. We definitely did get stronger by just focusing on chest those days. But here was the wake-up call. My wife and I were looking through old pictures, pictures of when I was in college, before I started getting into weight training. She happened to see a picture of me with my shirt off. Let's not get crazy, it was just my shirt off. And she said probably the most insulting thing you could say to someone who's been weight training for a while. She didn't mean it. But here's what she said. Huh, you still look the same like you did back in college. Ouch. I said, what do you mean? I've been spending so much time in the gym, especially training my chest and my shoulders. How could that be? Her face turned bright red. What she said actually was kind of true. You know, I ran into the bathroom after she made that comment and started looking at myself in the mirror. And you know what? I didn't look really all that much different even after spending all of that time in the gym. So eventually, I had to let go of my ego and try different training routines. I started working out with a new buddy of mine, someone who had a Master of Science degree in kinesiology, which is like the study of movement. And he, of course, as a result of that, was a personal trainer. And he encouraged me to start incorporating a lot of the same moves that Steve just mentioned that I just read to you. Squats, deadlifts, pull-ups. He said, start doing those and let's see what happens. And sure enough, he was right. That's when I saw the biggest and best changes. My overall strength went up. I would do isolation exercises for my forearms and they would never seem to get any bigger. But when I started doing deadlifts and pull-ups, oh my gosh, all of a sudden, they started looking proportionate. And you know, I'm not a huge fan of anecdotal evidence. But when we do look at the research, what we find is when you do compound movements like deadlifts and squats, by recruiting more muscle fiber, there's actually the bigger potential to burn body fat. Now, this isn't a guarantee, of course. There are a lot of other factors that we'd have to pay attention to to see if you're really burning body fat. But what we do know is when you have more muscle, you burn more calories. You burn more calories when you're sleeping, watching TV, driving in your car, you name it. And I think the sample full body routine that Steve mentioned that I just read to you is perfect for beginners. Just again, be sure that your form is correct before you do anything else. Now, really quickly before I go, If you want to show some support for our podcast, there are many ways to help out, both free and otherwise. 
Just come by oldpodcast.com slash support to check it out. I wanna thank you again for listening, for being a subscriber to the show because we are quickly approaching episode number 500. I can't believe it. And it's all thanks to you. I wouldn't do this unless you were listening. So thank you as always, and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.